like what's up you guys i hope you are all doing so so good today i am here to open up a new weekly reading vlog i haven't weekly vlogged in what feels and actually is forever it feels like i think the last time oh my god that is so loud y'all i swear i set up there's no noise and then i start filming and suddenly the world wants to be my asmr room which i mean it's it doesn't sound too bad but like i just need a little bit of silence just a little bit. I haven't weekly vlogged in literally forever. I think the last time I weekly vlogged was in March, it feels like. So today I am here with a new weekly reading vlog. We're gonna start some new exciting books, books that are also part of the Asian Readathon, which is super exciting. I also have books to show you guys that just got here and just a bunch of exciting new things. I got new glasses, I got a new tattoo, I got my nails done for the first time in like a year and a half, which sounds like such a tiny thing but like honestly it was a huge commitment for me to actually go out and just get my nails done because I am still terrified of the Pandora. <laughs> what else is new? Anyway, irrelevant. Here with an exciting vlog. However, I will let past, future, present, <laughs> all of them, Mel, take it away with the sponsor of today's video. Thank you past me for letting me take over and as you can see there's a lot different. The bookshelves are different now but the one thing that remains the same is the sponsor of today's video which has kindly partnered with us and that is GlassesUSA.com. And GlassesUSA.com is great for a number of reasons but the first thing is that by cutting the middleman GlassesUSA.com is able to offer prescription glasses as well as sunglasses up to 70% off retail price which is great because you guys know I love myself a Good deal who doesn't love themselves a good deal and the cool thing is that you can try all of these and browse all of these online without leaving the comfort of your home and they have up to 9,000 different glass styles from all sorts of different brands as well so they have their in-house brands Muse and Amelia E and then they also have the more well-known brands like Michael Kors, Armani, Ray-Ban, Oakley and most of these you can also get with your prescription which is extra awesome. I recently got a few glasses from their website and the first ones are the ones that I I'm using which you guys have seen around on my channel because I have been wearing these non-stop whenever I have to read edit anything I'm wearing these glasses I love the fact that they are kind of oversized I just feel like these frame my face a little bit nicer they bring a little color and just life to my face and these are the Ototo Bellona and these are in the tortoise gold edition I feel like a, you know I'm feeling myself that's all I can say and then of course I also had to get a pair of sunglasses these obviously don't have prescription because I don't need it for my sunglasses but these are the Ototo Magnus and these are in the style gold so the framing and everything is gold just as my prescription glasses gold again is my jam I like that accent color it's in all of my jewelry pieces it's just what matches best with my style and just so you guys get an idea for pricing which I know can get quite intimidating when you're talking about glasses a complete pair of eyeglasses or sunglasses can come up to as little as $30 and each pair of glasses come with a free basic prescription the lenses are also super high quality and they're the same quality that you would find at any glass store. They are made in their own state-of-the-art labs and they can handle about any prescription whether it's bifocal, single vision, or progressive lenses. And the other cool thing is that shopping at GlassesUSA.com comes with a risk-free experience meaning you get free shipping and returns. You also get a 100% money-back guarantee within the 14 days of delivery, no questions asked. Also, something that is incredibly important to me because I am someone that I am constantly in front of a computer, in front of a phone, all of my work I do in front of a computer, things that have a lot of blue light. They also offer blue light lenses. They are made from MR8, which is a super durable material that makes them much stronger than other lenses. Lock up to 95% of blue light and it definitely feels like that when I'm looking at my screen. So again, thank you so much to GlassesUSA.com for sponsoring today's video and if you do want to check them out, I will be leaving my link in the description at the top as per usual so that you guys can easily check them out if you've been in need of new glasses of getting your new prescription of just you know if you've been finding yourself in the need to kind of like switch it up and i'll let pass mel take it back roll the tape roll the clip and let's just get on with the reading vlog i have finished a book which is the undercover bromance i always say the undercover bromance it's just called undercover bromance i finished this and i was super hopeful for this one because i had already read obviously the bromance book club and i gave that one a five star initially bumped it down to a four star i was hoping that this was going to be the five star and then it ended up being a 3.5 i genuinely loved mac and his chemistry with liv i just think 
think that Lissa K. Adams, for some reason in this book, made the male character a lot more likable than the female character. And I guess I just got so hyped because everybody was telling me, if you don't like Liv, then in this one, you get like a redemption arc and she gets better and you're gonna love her. And I literally came out of this book disliking her even more. I just think that Liv as a main character is incredibly self-centered and selfish and she may have the good intentions at heart but she generally has the worst execution possible and this book being a rom-com but also talking about the topic of sexual abuse and sexual assault it just seemed rather insensitive to crack jokes in the middle of a very heavy scene in the middle of a scene that could potentially be triggering for people or on the other hand to live as a main character pressuring victims of abuse to stand up because she wants them to step up and because she thinks this and because she wants things to be done in a particular way and so it was just really infuriating I guess seeing Liv be so insensitive towards these people that just didn't really sit well with me and I felt very uncomfortable reading not only did she do that to strangers but she also did that to friends and so I don't think Liv got any more likable to me in this book. If anything, it just further proved why I disliked her as a character. So this one was a 3.5 or a 3. I just genuinely, like, I don't even care about giving it a rating, I guess. And I can totally see why people enjoyed this one, because I think it still has a lot of elements that are redeemable and that are great, like Mac and the Russian and the Romance Book Club. However, the Romance Book Club isn't even like the main point of the book. It's rather, again, the whole theme of sexual assault, which was, uh, it just, I just, I just, no, I, I, every time I talk about this, I'm trying not to get worked up because it was just not a fun time for me. So yeah, I liked a lot of things about this book, but the main part of this book was just not for me. And after that, I had no idea what to pick up. I was looking at my bookshelf and and I was like, I know I should follow my TBR. Mel, you should really follow your TBR, which I regularly don't, so there's that. But I was like, do I read The Damned? Do I read Shadow of Night? Do I pick up House of Leaves? Like, what the heck do I pick up? And then it dawned on me. It dawned on me that I was in the mood to read Wicked Fox by Kat Cho. And so I am reading Wicked Fox by Kat Cho. I am currently on page 89. So I am really enjoying it. This is how it's, I don't know if you guys can see that. This is how it's going. Uh, there's a lot of tabbing going on. I am really just enjoying my ride here. I really like the fact that Mi Young is very self-aware and even though she is consuming the souls of men because she is a gumiho and she has to do that to live, she still is very much aware that even if she targets criminals and even if that's the demographic that she will seek after to consume, that doesn't necessarily make her good as it could potentially not make her necessarily evil. I just like the fact that she's so self-aware of these things because I feel like usually in YA when we have the female protagonist they are usually not self-aware at all and so I just like that side of it. It feels very K-drama which I am very much enjoying. There is a lot of folklore and lore about the gumiho and about the I think it's pronounced do dokaibi which is Korean goblins and and I just, it's so rich in the folklore and the lore, which is something that I very much enjoy, as you guys know. So this one, I am just loving. Five star feels. I didn't want to say that before because I didn't want to jinx it. So this may just be me jinxing it. I hope. I hope if I jinx the jinx, it won't really happen to like double jinx. So first off, I bought Clown in a Cornfield and this is by Adam Cessary. I really like slasher stuff, as you guys would have known if you watched one of my previous vlogs where I talked about the Mary Shelley Club. I genuinely love anything slasher. I grew up watching those movies when I was younger. I grew up in the Scream. I know what you did last summer era, so that for me is like great. And I really hope that this meets the expectation. And all I know is that I believe it's a slasher with a clown and that's about it. And then I put up a Patreon poll for our June book club picks. We always choose two books. And so one I already owned and then the other one I had to buy. And I came to realize very quickly that um, buying the box set was cheaper than buying them individually if I ended up enjoying them in the long run. And so I just decided to give in and I bought the entire Daughter of Smoke and Bone box set. So here I go. This is the Daughter of Smoke and Bone box set. I haven't even opened it. I literally just took it out of the box right before filming. So this is what the spines look like. I should really just 
open it, huh? And show you guys what they look like individually. But this is one of our Patreon book club picks for June. I have been told that these in person are literally stunning. And so I just had to, they were right. <laughs> I just had to give in. Yo, these are really stunning. I thought for some reason that the hardcovers um, of the Illumicrate versions were just the UK hardcovers and they're not. So I just settled for the paperbacks of the new covers and God am I thankful that they did a rebrand on this because this is 10 times prettier than what they had back then and it's also more current. And the last thing to unbox at the very beginning of this, I was gonna say book haul, this is not a, I mean technically it is, weekly reading vlog is this, which just again got here, I literally just took it out of the box, I haven't even opened it so I don't know what this is. Thank you so much for bringing so much joy and energy to booktube this past year, you are literally what got me through my last year of grad school, I hope you love these characters as much as I do, my all time faves from Darian. Darian, that is literally Really the sweetest thing ever. I am glad that you were able to get through grad school. That's the important thing. And I am glad that you are enjoying everything. That is so freaking sweet. But props to you because you got through grad school and that is not easy. So congrats to you. This is about you, Darian. This is about you. This one came in super prettily wrapped. So what is this? Oh, wait. Oh. And it's The Raven Boys by Maggie Stiefvater. And that is so freaking exciting. I am in love with the hardcovers of these books. I think they are stunning. And I know this is a very kind of like classic YA series, which is not as talked about now as I feel it was talked about back then. So I am very interested to see how I'm going to like this. I know this is primarily about clairvoyancy, and that is really all that I know going into it. I really don't want to know too much about it because I feel like the more I build up expectations for like old school YA, that's when it kind of goes amiss for me. So I'm just gonna keep the expectations very low when I do get to this. But thank you so much for sending this my way. That is literally the sweetest thing ever. And again, congrats to you for getting through grad school because that's awesome. Uh, as far as book hauls go, that is all that I have for you guys. There will be unboxings later on because I do have to unbox my owl crate and y'all are gonna go back to the past and then meet up with present me again. It's just gonna go back and forth because I was b-rolling or filming little stuff here and there but I wasn't really vlogging vlogging so you'll just see a collection of memories and a collection of reviews. <laughs> if you will. So that is what you're in for today. I am going to be vlogging for the entire week with some glimpses of the past. Let's get into it because I really do want to sit down and read because Wicked Fox is really good. So <laughs> let's get into it. What are we doing? That's not what we're getting tattoos. We'll see the picture. We're getting tattoos, y'all. Hello. Um, it's gonna be my first tattoo. I'm getting it on my hand. Secured. There we go. The hand. Not that hand. Oh my. Not not her. My hand. Not her showing her. Let me see. My hand. Oh yeah. Oh, mira. Not her showing her muscles and flexing. Oh my god. But we got our tattoos. It went incredibly well. I thought it was gonna hurt more than it actually did. Oh my god. Drive. It hurt a lot less than I thought it would. It did feel a little bit prickly, of course, because like it's the hand. But a lot better than. It would be.
right, everyone. Hello. I am back from getting my nails done and look at these beauties. They just look so good. I am so glad that I made the decision to go get them done. It had been a hot minute since I had. I have got my Starbucks with me. My banana bread is behind me. And uh, mm, this chai latte, honestly, 10 out of 10. I have my first Owl Crate to unbox with you guys. I recently became an Owl Crate rep and that is incredibly exciting. So if you do want to sign up for Owl Crate, I will be leaving my code down below, but it is Melanie. So if you do sign up to I'll create at any point and use the code Melanie, you'll get 10% off a new subscription. So that is again, super exciting. And I am just so thankful and happy to be a part of the Allocrate team. So thank you for having me. Honestly, that is super cool. Let me let me show you guys the box. So this is the Allocrate for April. I have yet to see anything that's on the inside. I did see a little bit of a spoiler on one item, but beside that, everything else, pretty much a mystery to me. I do have a guess as to what it is though. I am convinced based on the theme of Ruthless Rivals. It was being pitched as a Jamaican-inspired fantasy. I'm convinced that it's going to be witches steeped in gold. So we'll see if I am right, but I am honestly super excited to be a part of the Allocrate team because this focuses more on YA fantasy, which is a genre that you guys know I tend to read a lot of. Here we go. The reveal. Ooh. Spoiler warning, I'm not gonna look at this just now. I literally, it's like in big bold letters. This is the spoiler card and the theme for this month is Ruthless Rivals. We have this. Again, it says, etc. And this is challenge fellow fiction loving friends with categories that were designed just for bookworms. Readers will need to rack their bookish brains to score points in this fast paced game of literary lists. Wait, so is this supposed to be like a cards against humanity type of thing? I think I'm gonna have to read the instructions and read the back of the spoiler card once the time comes. But this is pretty cool. I love me some board games that I can play with my family or with friends. So that is pretty cool. What is this? Oh, oh, this is big. Oh my God. Okay. So this is this month's enamel pin. I didn't expect it to be this big, but that's so cool. And I don't know who this was designed by. I see designs, it seems, by the back of the card. But again, I will be reading the spoiler card at the very end to let you guys know. We have this. Is this a Hamilton item? History has its eyes on you. What is this? Oh, oh my God. Wait, is this for your phone? This is supposed to be for your phone. I usually don't put stuff like this anymore on my my phone especially since I have like a lilac cover for my phone but if I had like a navy blue or a clear one, I would totally be using this. It, oh wait, this is coffee, right. I saw that every month they would have a sample of coffee from Fable Coffee Grounds. And I have seen Liv take pictures with this coffee several times. I am a coffee lover first and foremost. I do like tea, but coffee is just like my bae. So this is literally perfect. And it's a cinnamon hazelnut. It also has like a chandelier, if you guys can see. Is this inspired on, what is it, Where Dreams Descend? It could also be the Night Circus. It doesn't even have to be Where Dreams Descend, but uh, could potentially be. This is the item that I spoiled, and I'm not even mad that I did. The stars incline us, they do not bind us. If you saw my first ever journal setup, I used that quote for January. Yes, uh, they are chopsticks inspired by the Scarlet Gang and the White Flowers. You guys know this was my top book of 2020 and I was really considering buying reusable chopsticks recently because I eat Asian food all the time and I love, look at me putting in the beauty guru shots, but I really love the fact that it has its own little stand. I really, really appreciate the thought gone into it. What else is in here? I do believe Yes, there was meant to be a pillowcase. I think this is one of the items that they revealed or teased when they announced the theme for April. And it has some daggers in there, some roses, some leaves. I think the only thing left at this point is the book. I don't really don't want to drop anything. I also don't want to drop the fluff everywhere. This book, can you guys see it? Am I on frame? Is this on frame? Are any of us in frame? <gasps> yes! Okay! so freaking excited so it is witches steeped in gold by cyan and smart oh 
Wait, the cover is different. Wait, 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 wait. This cover is different than the regular one. Okay, I'm opening the book. Also, I really like that they have the wrapping paper in here. It says I will create exclusive edition. That is stunning. The author also has like a, it has a, what do you call it? An author's note right here. Isn't this just stunning? So I know the regular version is meant to be green. So this is more of like a, like a black with gold detailing and it is so freaking pretty. Their order divides them. Their revenge will unite them. My God, is this signed by the author? Is this not signed by the, oh wait, it is. Oh. It is signed by the author. There's art under the dust jacket. Are you kidding me? So it has this design on the hardcover. This is so freaking pretty. It has art under the dust jacket. I'll create this is fantastic. I love all of the little details, the personalization of the copy instead of like the regular one. So in this one, we follow Araya and Araya has been confined to a cell for most of her life. And on the other side, we have Jasmine who has stolen magic at her fingertips. She has kind of been forced into this life, into submission. And so these two will form an unlikely alliance to bring down a common enemy me and that is where the story goes that is essentially kind of the elevator pitch i guess you could call it of this story now for the run through of the items i can finally look at the spoiler card so the first thing that we have is the etc card game which was designed by paperback bones as you guys know i always leave all of the artists linked in the description so you guys can check them out if you like their art or would like to support them and then we have the fable grounds coffee yes it is inspired on where dreams descend then we have the hamilton inspired phone wallet which was designed by lady chubb letters the pillowcase was designed by kdp letters and last but not least we have the chopstick which was designed also by paperback bones who also did the etc game and then last but not least the book was designed by artist tiara at bloody damn it <laughs> i love it and the pin again was designed by ic designs however i now have extra time Time and I can sit down and read so I want to sit down and read okay hello I am here to update the vlog you guys are currently on my couch so you're probably gonna fall at some point but I read some of Wicked Fox I am getting sleepy though so I don't know if I'll keep reading tonight I am currently about to enter chapter 16 I really like how Ji Hoon is kind of not necessarily teaching but kind of reinforcing the fact to Mi Young that yes she is a gumiho but at the same time she is still part human and for as much as she wants to deny that side of her she still needs to recognize that there is some sort of humanity in her and that is important to acknowledge and again reinforce and so that part of it i am very much enjoying and i think in these last i guess the last 20 or so pages that i read started showing a more humane side to mi young that we hadn't seen before in the book and her belief in not interacting with humans and just staying within her own lane is very much influenced by her mother and it's very interesting the dynamic that they have going on in the sense that the mom is constantly reinforcing these roles and constantly kind of beating Mi Young down and saying you are a shame whatever did I do to deserve a child like you and basically shaming her but only because of how it reflects on her and how she looks and how she feels based on what Mi Young is doing and it's sad to see how that is affecting Mi Young's day-to-day -day life Life when she really just wants to be normal so I don't know I'm enjoying this quite a lot I have the confidence that I can maybe finish this tomorrow tomorrow I'm gonna be reading manga though and I'm gonna include a little bit in this video though it's not gonna be the focus of the video but I am gonna be reading something for a different vlog which should already be up by the time that this is up so hopefully it is and hopefully by the time that I'm done with that I'll be able to get back to this and finish it and I'm not gonna lie I am thinking of reading, I think, is it the last thing he told me? It's one of the book of the month picks for this month. It looks super good. And uh, Kaylin, one of my Patreons has been hyping the book up. So I'm just like, should I read it? Because I kind of am in the mood for like thrillers this month. So it's time for me to take off.
z makeup and just go to bed because i need to wake up at 7 a.m tomorrow because i have an announcement going up and i just need to be awake and in the mental space for that uh time to take up the makeup Good morning, how are we doing? Um, I woke up today super early, <laughs> hello. I just have gone past the denial and I have embraced that I really need another bookshelf. So I am currently on the IKEA website because it's bad. I literally, when I put those three books, four books that I got here yesterday, I was like, okay, no, <laughs> it's time because you clearly don't got no space. I am just gonna put that on pause and I'm gonna buy some books instead to make me feel better because books make me happy. So the book club pick for June, um, which if you guys don't know, this is super exciting actually. Liv and I have started a book club together on Patreon. So that is just, oh my God, we've been planning it for like over a month now and it went live today and it was so nerve wracking, but it's also super exciting. So we have a book club together now called Le Fantasm Book Club and we're gonna be reading mostly fantasy, but we don't rule out anything else. So that is honestly just ugh, top tier. <laughs> literally top tier it's so cool and our june book club pick is a dark and hollow star by ashley shuttleworth and i don't own it so i need to buy it okay y'all i did it i ordered the bookshelf so um it cost an arm and a leg but i ordered it <laughs> okay you guys so uh the light might change this is horrible hello uh i read a little bit of wicked fox i got up to page 100 and 70 i think something like that but i am about to grab some manga it's time it's what we are doing so i have a bunch here that i need slash want to read i just don't know what i'm starting out with because i <laughs> have options that's the pile right there this is what we're going for this I just don't know which one I want to read first. Should I just start out nice and good and just like read Death Note? Is this where we're at? Okay, coffee has been secured. I made this myself. Don't be fooled by the plastic Starbucks cup. I've just been mm, reusing it so as to not use the one where I put my water. But I am including this in the main vlog. Yes, I have a different outfit on because we don't want to wear the same outfit in every video, <laughs> says the girl who wears the same shirt over and over. Anyway, irrelevant. But I am putting this in the main vlog because I'm reading Spy X Family and this is so good so far. I really don't know how much I've read that bit right there. So like I've barely even begun, but I love this. It's so comedic so far and it's like not shying away from being funny, even though the issue is serious. And I just really enjoy that. So, so far we have a great start and I can just tell that this is gonna be a great mix of political intrigue with comedy, maybe action. It's just gonna be a well-rounded story and I am here for it. So just have to include that in the main vlog as well in case you guys were interested in reading Spy X Family or if you've never heard about it. Hello, 
I feel like the entirety of this vlog has been me in the living room slash me in front of this frame, which typically never happens. I feel like most of my vlogs are in front of the bookshelf. I don't know, this vlog has been like all over the place because I have started vlogs within this vlog and it's just been a crazy week. So I've been like vlogging, not vlogging, not vlogging for this, vlogging for this. It's been a time. However, I am setting up because I have sprints with my Patreons in how long? I don't know, okay. 24 minutes. I, for some reason, I thought it was like 10 minutes. But look at me being early for once. I'm always late to my Patreon sprints because they're early and I always wake up like 20 minutes before. So I'm always like in a rush. However, I am really hoping to finish both of the books that I am currently uh, reading, which are Wicked Fox and The Last Thing He Told Me, which actually, I don't think I've told you guys that I have started The Last Thing He Told Me. So let me set you guys up on my trusty candle holder <laughs> and just chat with you guys for a bit before I actually go into Z Patreon sprints because I don't think I have given you any updates in like a day or two. So let's get into it. I am currently on page um, 278 of Wicked Fox. So I have like 120 or so pages to go. So I can definitely finish this during sprints. I think my goal for my Patreon sprints today, because we usually go for a long time, we usually go for either like five to seven hours. So I know I can definitely finish out Wicked Fox. And then I did start the last thing he told me, which obviously doesn't have the dust jacket right now, it's in the room, but I am really enjoying this. So this is one of the book of the month picks for May, and I felt myself kind of in the need for a thriller. In fact, my brother and I watched the movie for The Woman in the Window. Not it. Like, that movie, not it. I have not read the book, but yes, we watched the movie, like, not it, and I was in, like, a thriller kick, so I was just like, let me just pick this up, and I kind of also want to pick up The Hunting Wife, so maybe I will go into a little bit of a thriller binge throughout the month because I definitely am in like the mood in between books to read these. So in this one, we follow Hannah and Hannah is the wife to Owen. Owen was a single dad before they got married. So he does have a 16 year old daughter named Bailey. And one day it breaks into the news that the software up and coming company in which he worked slash invested in, which is called the shop, was found guilty or is rather currently under an investigation for embezzlement and fraud and Owen leaves two very ominous things, literally a duffel bag with more than $600,000. And then he leaves Hannah a very ominous note that only says, protect her. Protect her meaning the daughter, Bailey. And so we kind of embark on this journey as this stepmom daughter duo, you know, try and figure out exactly what has happened to Owen. Apparently, according to people, Owen doesn't seem to be who he says he is. A lot of people seem to know a lot more about Owen than Hannah herself does. And so it's just been, it did have a little bit of a slow start in which I wasn't necessarily hooked. There was this one line though. Whenever I have this line on thrillers, it's like, oh my God, it just instantly hooks me. So I was glad that that line was there because it gave me kind of like the final push to propel through the book. So this is when she's talking to a US Marshal that shows up at her doorstep and the US Marshal tells her, I can help you too. And she asks, wait, with which part? He replies, with which part what? She says, can you help? He replies, the easy part, getting through this. Then she says, what's the hard part? Owen's not who you think he is. And I am very intrigued because apparently from what the book has told you, like the US Marshal's office is not under the jurisdiction to investigate this case. So it's solely under the FBI, but everybody's been showing up at Hannah's doorstep asking for questions and just demanding answers. And it's been really intriguing so far to see exactly what is going on and who really Owen is because Owen is such a mysterious character. We truly don't know anything about him going into this book and still throughout the book, we still don't know anything about Owen. So I am definitely having a good time. I did read a lot of this yesterday. I was reading Wicked Fox and then I switched to this at night. And I think I read most of what I have read. I read like 70 pages and I read them pretty quickly too. So I definitely think this is gonna be a quick read as well. It's proven to be so far because it's very, like the intrigue levels are there for you to keep reading to find out exactly what's happening. So this has 303 pages. I'm currently on page 115. So that means I have around, let's say like 190 pages left. So like 190 pages left of this 
pages plus 130-ish pages of this. I definitely think I can do it and hopefully I'll be able to finish these so that I can start The Damned by Renee Adier, which is actually on my TBR because none of these books are on my TBR, so I definitely need to get on with the actual planned, you know, to be read pile. So I think the one thing that I didn't expect about Wicked Fox was to be so centered around that familial dynamic, specifically with Mi Young and Yena. I did not expect kind of that intricate, complicated dynamic that they have to be such a prominent part in the story. However, I find myself oftentimes just in awe of how horrible Yena is and it's definitely infuriating how she sees Mi Young as just kind of like a product and she needs Mi Young to be perfect and she needs Mi Young to follow all of the rules and to do whatever she says because she is Yena's daughter and she is supposed to be strong because she's Yena's daughter and also a lot of just familial dynamics with Ji Hoon as well that I didn't expect, but I think those parts have more so broken my heart rather than on the flip side, Mi Young's relationship infuriated me. Ji Hoon's story with his dad and his mom and now with his Hal Myoni, it's just, it's so heartbreaking to see how I guess Ji Hoon has been led down by the people that he loves most time and time again. And he, I guess that's why he loves people so deeply because he is is just yearning for somebody who will finally stay as opposed to those parental figures that have unfortunately left him behind. Ah, uh, it just breaks my heart to see Yi Hoon in a situation like that and oh, it's just the familial dynamic in Wicked Fox is great. If you like yourself familial dynamics, I definitely say give this a shot and I will never get over just the lore, the folklore part of this, how everything weaves together so seamlessly and how there are so many, again, like foreshadowing slash red herring moments in here that definitely keep coming back up as you read. And even though you kind of know where the story is going, it still has a way of shocking you that leaves you wanting more and wanting to find out more and why is the reason of this and why are people acting like that and why why did this betrayal happen and so it is just so well done and the writing honestly is beautiful i obviously love the just friendship and camaraderie that Ji Hoon and Mi Young have formed. I love how Ji Hoon is constantly reminding Mi Young of her humanity and how she is not the subject of what her mother has brought her out to be, that she is still human and that she still is entitled to her own opinion and to her own rights. And I just love how how strongly he reinforces that for her because she needs to hear those things. I kind of also love the development for them because you can see that it's not instant. You can tell that it's a work in progress. Someone like Mi Young who is so closed off is not gonna open up just you know, in the first meeting and somebody like Yi Hoon is really great at balancing out somebody like Mi Young and his charm and that genuine charisma that he has really allows her to open up in a way that feels very genuine and that feels very natural for her. And so I just like the way that these both characters balance each other out. It's just really, really beautiful. And the, you know, one of the bigger twists already happened and it happened like at the beginning of like page 200. So there's still a lot that needs to happen, a lot of reveals slash twists that need to happen. And I'm just here holding on to my seat being like, what the heck is gonna happen next? Because this book is just, it's really amazing. You guys, I really did not think I was gonna enjoy Wicked Fox as much as I am, especially because I've heard mostly mixed reviews on Wicked Fox, but I am really enjoying my time with this and I can't wait to finish and see what is up. And I also can't wait for the second book to get here because I am most likely gonna read that not necessarily as soon as it gets here because I do have a lot of other stuff to read, but definitely maybe in June. I think maybe I can definitely put that in my TBR and hopefully read it and follow it because I suck at finishing series slash reading next installments because I'm always scared to see how it's gonna go down.
What's up everyone? Hello, it was time I came back here and gave you guys an update into my reading. I am not quite sure if this is going to be the end of this vlog because I am going to be vlogging another completely separate thing tomorrow and that's going to be more of like a self-care day reading vlog and it's only going to be 24 hours long because tomorrow I'm taking the day off and it's just going to be mostly chill. I will try not to look at my computer or work too much. It's just going to be reading watching TV, ordering some nice food, so I, I'm not gonna be thinking too much about work, hopefully. I still have some videos to edit, so I don't know what's gonna go down tomorrow, if I'll actually look at some part of the videos and put up, you know, early access and everything for Patreon, or if I'll just look at them on Tuesday, or if I'll just work at nighttime tomorrow. We shall see what happens. I am very prideful of my work, and I am a self-proclaimed workaholic, so I just don't know if I won't touch anything. Like, I most likely will, but not at the extent that I do every day. Point is, I need to update you guys on my reading and what I have gotten done today. I did finish my main two books that I was reading this week. So I did finish Wicked Fox, literally annotated this to filth. This book was incredible. Definitely didn't expect this to end the way that it did. It ended in a cliffhanger. I did not expect that to go down. I thought the plot of this book would be self-contained. I, since everybody has been mentioning that Vicious Spirit is more of a companion novel, I thought it had like another conflict altogether. This would have been resolved, but this definitely has like an overarching storyline that will appear in Vicious Spirits. I don't know if it'll be settled then or if there's another book coming after that. I really don't know what the plan is with the Wicked Fox series, with the Gumiho series, but this was genuinely so good. I don't know if there's anything else that I can add to this beside the twists, just so great. I think Kat Cho is really great at writing tension and building that tension up to when that catalyst happens, to when that reveal happens. You're just all over the place shocked and like wanting to know more. So I think genuinely Kat Cho is so good at writing those scenes because I was on the edge of my seat for like the the later third of this book, I was just like, what's gonna happen now? Because there's still so many pages, so like, what's gonna happen now? to keep me gripped and shocked when I feel like there's been some sort of resolution and it just kept like spiraling and going and it was sad. I cried at the end, which I didn't think I would cry. I was literally just, the tears were flowing. I wasn't sobbing, but I was crying. Fantastic, literally cannot wait to read the second one. Can't wait for it to get here. Maybe I'll squeeze it in this month because I loved this one so much. Maybe I'll just read it next month. We shall see what happens, but I did finish Wicked Fox and then I finished finished also the last thing he told me and I gave this a four star. I find that oftentimes with thrillers they're like very hit or miss like there's always that one element that it kind of holds you back from giving it a higher rating and I feel like that happens quite a bit where whether thrillers are a little bit too plot convenient or just the actions serve the characters no purpose rather than to benefit the plot really and I found that several things in this book did feel like that but it was still very enjoyable. I think what really hooked me with this one was more so the fact that the whole background story to these characters and I guess the way that the conflict unfolded about the whole embezzlement and fraud for a software company somebody who's incredibly smart, the character's backstory, and just, I guess, the whole investigation side of it that, in my opinion, was executed really well. I think that's what kept the story going and it just kept it interesting. It was all of these moving parts of you have the US Marshals investigating and then you have Hannah and Bailey on the other end investigating and trying to come to terms with exactly what is going on with Owen when Bailey and Hannah don't even have a good relationship. Both of these characters, like Bailey does not recognize Hannah even as her stepmother. She barely recognizes her as her father's wife and so that dynamic right there was very complicated. It had like a lot of internal battles and like struggles and motivations, I guess, as to why it, the character was being held back from acknowledging that. And so I really liked the development for both Hannah and Bailey collectively. And I love that the book talks about how you don't bond with everyone and how you don't necessarily get along with everyone. And it might just be a struggle. It may just be a hardship that unites people into seeing each other in a different light and finally recognizing what they've been all along. And so that conversation was really well 
established. I really just enjoyed that. I think their dynamic was really great, how they bounced off each other and how Hannah really was learning how to be a mom, I guess you could say, because she'd never really experienced that. She'd had a very complicated life at home where her mom left them when she was very young and she was raised by her grandfather. And so gr having grown up perhaps in not the most normal situation, it definitely put up some sort of barrier into her being the parental figure that Bailey perhaps needed as she was growing up, as she met Hannah and as Hannah got married to Owen. And so that relationship was fantastic. It definitely was the most strong thing about the book. I think I, I guess what really didn't do it for me in a way was the fact that Bailey was constantly saying, oh, I remember now or oh, this detail, like, yes, I remember it now. And it just, again, seemed a little bit too plot convenient, in my opinion, for Bailey to be like, I remembered this, but I didn't say anything but I'm saying something now. It really came up a lot in the book and that was how the plot was progressing because Bailey was remembering these things and that's not to say that they were interesting because they were. The ending though, oftentimes again, I find myself unsatisfied with the ending for thrillers. This ending, I literally am holding the book backwards, but the ending of this book really made me emotional. To kind of see, I guess, the journey that both of these characters had and it was just a really beautiful ending. It definitely was a little bit sad in terms of resolution but I think overall the way that it ended it was what it needed to be and that's very rare during thrillers because usually the ending is what pulls it apart so I really do think that the ending was fantastic I really loved it and I definitely enjoyed this a lot and if you're into this whole like FBI US Marshal investigation and like embezzlement and fraud and like talking to lawyers it very much read to me as like a legal drama would I, I don't know for some reason I could totally see myself watching this on screen as like one of my Spanish thrillers that I love watching or just a regular thriller this would translate really really well on the screen as a TV show this would be amazing so I really just enjoyed this and like visually it was really nice as well and last but not least this was also a goal for me today and I wasn't really pressuring myself to do this but I did get around to it a little bit before I started getting sleepy just now but I did start The Damned by Renee I uh, this is on my TBR <laughs> first of all this is on my TBR so that's great because that means that I can actually start reading stuff that is on my TBR so I think after this I am gonna move into Shadow of Night by Deborah Harkness and that being said I really do think that that should be like an entirely separate vlog because I know I'm gonna have probably a lot of updates on Shadow of Night also on this and whatever else I end up reading and so I definitely think this is me coming to terms with the fact that this is the end of a vlog but I started The Damned and there's already some sort of annotations happening. I love that Renee Adier, like right off the bat, is reminding you of what happened in the previous book. I really am thankful for that because I had forgotten like little details about the ending of book one. And so the fact that the reminder is here is really nice. You just like jog my memory a little bit and kind of remind myself of what happened during book one. So I will continue reading this tomorrow. I don't really have anything else to say because I literally read six pages that's all that i read and i am literally getting sleepy so it is time for me to start wrapping this up but just you know i did start this but i will definitely call this week a victory because i read two books and then i read seven manga volumes so you know not everything was in this vlog but uh again i had to do a vlog within a vlog which was incredibly weird my first time doing it but i hope that this weekly vlog was some sort of in some sort of somewhat enjoyable is what I'm trying to say. I did get my first tattoo. I got my nails done for the first time in a year. I read some books. I read some manga and I had some delicious food this week and it was just a lot of fun even if the week wasn't the best emotionally which is why I'm taking a day off tomorrow but even though it wasn't the best week you still have to acknowledge all of the good things. Even in all the midst of the craziness there was some good. So yes you guys I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did give it a thumbs up and comment down below what you guys read this week. If you found any particularly amazing books, let me know. And if you read any of the books that I read this week, also let me know down below so that I can chat with you guys. If you reach the end of the video, let's leave some fox emojis down below for Wicked Fox because that is one of my new favorite books. And I just have to say that very proudly. I found another one of my favorite books, which feels really great. So let's leave some fox emojis down below if you reach the end of the video. Don't forget to subscribe for more bookish content as you guys 
guys know, I am constantly putting up videos. And if you want more exclusive content, exclusive videos, exclusive live streams, a podcast, book clubs, buddy reads, early access, and just a bunch of fun stuff, I do have a Patreon and the link for that is down below. We call ourselves The Citadel and it's literally the time of my life. If you do want to sign up, the link for that is down below as well as all of the links for my social media. Again, thank you so much to Glasses USA for sponsoring this video. If you do want to check out Glasses USA or if you've been in need of renovating your prescription, getting new glasses, and just want to get a completely different style or even just want to get sunglasses, the link for that will be at the top of the description so you guys can check that out and yeah i love you guys so so much and i shall see you on the next one bye guys